Hey, it's Anthony and Tucker at Land Title. We just came to bring you your lender update for the month of May. There's lots of good data here, so we want to just dive right into it. So let's go ahead and just start off the top. One of the big numbers that we're really seeing that's a good sign that we're seeing picking up is our under contracts are continuing to pick up speed month over month. That's what we're expecting, but given this time of year and given what's happened the last 18 months, just because we expect some doesn't mean it's going to happen. So mm -hmm. it's a good sign when we see expectations matching reality. And we're seeing that in our uh, solds and in our under contracts. We saw some really nice jumps month over month. Shows the market still picking up steam there. But the interesting piece here is our active inventory isn't increasing as much as we thought it was. Yeah, so let's look at this specifically here on this slide. And the craziest part about this, I think, is just that new listings coming to market have slowed so dramatically coupled with people just seem to be taking things off the market if they don't like the situation. So you can see in certain sub markets, think Boulder, for example, over the over the year to date, you know, we're only up 86 percent inventory month over or year over year. We're only up like 45 percent. Mm -hmm. I say only because we were at such extreme lows, right? 45 yes. percent sounds really intense. But, you know, honestly, it's working out pretty well. The crazy ones are like you get out in Longmont, you're up 80 percent inventory. Yeah. They still have way less inventory than Boulder and they are rising. But like it's just subtle, right? And subtle rise in inventory is a good sign for a really healthy market. Yep. Although we're not hitting our usual, I don't want to say glut, but excess of new listings and existing listings that are coming to the market this time of year. We expect to hit our really our peak of our inventory. Yeah, expect but we're to come not... like maybe July, but it still is not going to be nearly as big yep. as we would usually see. Yeah. I this... mean, look how fast the rise was last year. And that just shows the change in what's available. So for your borrowers and buyers out there looking to go shop, there's just not as many good options. Now, anecdotally, we've heard and seen some good things in June so far, which is really making us expect that we're gonna keep seeing our inventory rise, which is a good sign because this is when we need it. But interestingly, there's just not the same amount of inventory out there at the price points people are looking for. And we'll see that later on as well. But real quick, let's just take a look at places like Louisville. They're not up a lot. They're only up 60% uh, inventory wise. Superior, they're only up 44. Only 35 units in Louisville? And that just shows how much those fires are making an impact and where those prices are going because of it. And we'll see that later on as well. All right, so let's take a look at month supply. This really tells us just where is the market, right? We're in a seller's market. I've been telling people this a long time. I've been telling everyone this whole year. It's a seller's market. It's a great time to sell a house. Does that mean that there are a lot of buyers out there? No, not necessarily. What it means is the buyers out there that are shopping are serious and they are still putting a lot of things under contract even despite high interest rates, right? Yeah. So seller's market just means that the sellers hold the cards in the negotiations. So your buyers are still going to pay close to asking price or maybe even over asking price, but it's just not chaos like it's, it was a year ago. It's not the chaos we saw. And so when right. we think of a seller's market, last year wasn't a seller's market, last year was chaos. Right. What we're feeling this year is a traditional seller's market, right? Pre-pandemic seller's market. Exactly. Hey, we're under three months of inventory. Things are moving at a good clip. We're between 30 to 40 days of days on market. You know, we're getting close to asking price on average. So those are really good signs for the sellers, but it's also showing that, hey, we're not in the same ridiculous market. So we have more time to shop, right? It's not a, if you don't have cash, you're not even, you know, why are you even writing a contract? Like they were. Exactly. Last year. So really, I mean, it's a good spot for you guys to show your value. Yeah, and a 60% swing in inventory will do that, right? Mm -hmm. This is the slide that I really think says the most about you lenders working with your buyers, right? It's because what's the pace of the market? What should you expect? Um, when I was looking at the median, the median's way more extreme than this. So we're showing an average of 30 days active to under contract time, but that's not where the median is. Look at Louisville. Louisville's average is 16. That market yeah. is very similar to where it was last year. That's just bizarre. But medians at like nine nine and a half days yeah so when the median's really that fast all that means is there is some stuff that's been lingering for a long time it might have been overpriced and it's definitely coming off the market too which is also why our inventory situation is staying so low right it's because you guys help so many folks refinance and keep those low rates well now it's hard for them yeah. to trade up or down and leave that rate we hear it time and time again of oh i would sell my house and move to something smaller but where am I going to go? My mortgage would be the same amount for a quarter of the house or half the house. <laughs> exactly. And so we're still hearing these stories, um, which is really affecting the inventory. But when it comes to your buyers out there, there isn't as much inventory, but the stuff that's out there, you have a better chance of getting it under contract than you did last year, even though the cost of money is higher. And we'll look at this in a moment. So let's jump to this next screen. And this is where you can really see, 
hey, where's the inventory in the market sitting? Where do we have inventory in Boulder County? And what you can see is traditionally we're in that 600 to 1.5 million. That's our bread and butter. That's where we have the majority of our active inventory. And then we can see our solds don't match that exactly. All right. Well, thanks, Tucker, for interrupting our video. Yeah, and sorry. I guess we'll be reshooting that. No, we're not. It's fine. Keep going. <laughs> it's a great song. It's a good Black song. Black Keys. Fun song. If only it wasn't on your desk. I know. <laughs> All right. So if we go All to right. the next one, this is where I think you can really see some extreme changes. So the part of the market that we've been spending the most time on and helping people explain is that two to three million market. Look at it. Seven and a half months of inventory. It's a buyer's market for the first month. Now, two and a half to three million is at 9.75. It's an extremely good seller's mar or buyer's market. Mm -hmm. So if you actually are in a position where you could sell at one and a half, you could buy at two and a half, this might be one of the better trade of opportunities you've seen in a long time because you're gonna get a deal over two, two and a half million, right? and the or reason, even over two million. And the reason why we say that is the amount of money that folks are typically borrowing if they're not paying cash for these homes that's a large monthly payment to support that payment and your income. It's, there's just not a lot of people who have those types of incomes. When we look at borrowing $1.5 million at seven percent, six and a half, seven percent, right? Six, six and a half. Yeah. There's not a lot of them. So that's why we're seeing this glut is when we had the cheaper money, it was much, much easier to get people qualified for those larger homes and really trade up. Now, as we look down in the market, we can see how affordability is really driving what's happening that we're seeing. Absolutely. Where's look the competition? Million, right? Look well, at the honestly, competition. Honestly, look at yeah. under two million. Look at under two million. It's been pretty fast. But when you get down under about eight hundred thousand, not enough inventory. Yeah. Market's moving super quick. I mean, we'd expect it to move quick, but I mean, it's moving faster than most of the state. We actually have this remarkably resilient Boulder County market, which I know you guys all know this, but when you look at the data they've had a much worse inventory shortage in Denver, right? In the big metro area. And here we are with more inventory and we actually have a lot more sales. So the markets don't all act the same and Boulder County is doing remarkably well because of its resiliency, right? And then, you know, when buyers are out there shopping, what's the number one thing we always say? What's the number one rule of lo uh, real estate? Location, 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 right? That's true. If you're out on the Eastern Plains and you have a million dollar mansion, it's not a million dollar mansion. You have a million dollar mansion here in Boulder, well, it's, it's probably worth $3 million. <laughs> <laughs> May not yeah. be a mansion, right? Yeah. So it's always just all about your location. And it just shows when you're helping your folks buy things, go under contract, how important that location is um, for understanding what's going to appreciate, what's going to be good investments down the road. Now, of course, most home buyers don't think like that. That's where you can lend your expertise and just really create that value add and that depth of relationship with them is they're going to turn around and remember, oh, so-and-so loan officer gave me this great advice and now I'm actually on my way to financial independence. That'd be amazing. Definitely <laughs> helpful. All right, so we broke a bunch of these slides apart between detached and attached at this point because the attached market is doing so much better. Now, they're the very market. similar on inventory right now, but when it right. comes to how the sales are going, it's different. Especially compared to last year. Yes. So let's talk specifically about average sales price. And I think, you know, Tucker and I tend to lean into the trailing 12-month average sales price a lot because it really clarify, does. That's the TTM change percent number yeah, right there in right that here. column, that far right column. Or right down here if you want to look at Boulder County as a whole. Yes. So the thing about that is TTM percentage change is the last 12 months compared to the previous 12 months, right? And so you can see a little bit of a roller coaster that we've been on in the last 12 months, right? We had declining house prices from about May all the way through December. And then mm -hmm. we went into a much more normalized seasonal market. Well, that normalized seasonal market didn't quite hit the peak of what we saw a year ago. Now, that's not a problem. It's just a fact that if you bought in a little bit of a three month window, you could be slightly underwater because you overpaid for your house. Yes. You pay overpaid by 9%. So the fact that it came up all the way year over year to only minus three is isn't as so big bad. a deal. And the other piece to remember is while you may have technically be underwater slightly, the mortgage that they have on their house is so them. much cheaper and better than the mortgage that they would go get right now for that same price point or what they could buy in that price yeah. point based on the uh, monthly payment. We so just, let's, let's talk to those folks before they panic and we start seeing exactly you know this panic remind I mean, them their the money is so cheap right now your loan is what the value is well exactly your, your loan is think actually of, valuable exactly <laughs> well and you can think about it say your payment on about eight hundred fifty thousand was about 1.2 million last year so when it's that big of a spread for the same payment 
I mean, it makes sense why mm -hmm. it is what it is right now. And so, that's why we see the increased competition and appraisal gaps and these lower, <laughs> I don't want to say lower, but, you know, under under a million, under 800000 in the county purchase prices. Well, and so focus on the trailing 12-month percentage change, right? That was our point here. And the big point about that is there are certain markets who have done remarkably well. Look at Boulder, 3.4% appreciation over the last year because the vast majority of homes went up way more than the average person paid for them. I mean, it's the same problem where, where we are with the assessor, mm -hmm. right? When you saw 20% appreciation over two years prior, right? That became a problem. What the Fed's doing was intentionally slowing down the market, right? And it it's worked. working perfectly. But certain places in the country, like Phoenix, could be falling, like this, the floor fell out, right? Yeah. But here we are in a really resilient market where on average, Boulder County is 2% increase in average sales price over the last year. And that's a good, healthy sign because it needed to stagnate a little bit because affordability was getting so out yeah. of control. And one thing that interestingly to look at is look at Superior and uh, Louisville, right? So when you're looking at comps over the last 12 to 24 months, keep this in mind that comps are not necessarily staying that strong the more recent they are. So if you're trying to make an appraisal happen, look further back. If you're trying to undercut something or you know trying to show, hey, well, this is where the value actually is, look more recent, especially in Louisville and Superior, because we're seeing the long-term fallout of the Marshall fires. Right, and keep we're in finally mind seeing it show up. This is detached only, right. but we're finally seeing the show up in the stats um, of their sold prices because it's hard to sell a house next to a construction site or let alone someone who was unfortunate enough to lose their home. That's a hard sell. It is a hard sell. So let's go over here to attach because we're seeing awesome. It's the stuff exact opposite. Attached. It's the exact <laughs> opposite. Over the last 12 months, we've seen an 11% price increase and largely due to the fact that when money is expensive, people make sacrifices and what they don't like to make is location sacrifices. Mm -hmm. So what do they do? They buy a different product. And if you can't tell me that $600,000 for an attached product in Boulder County is a bargain, it really is because detached single family is very expensive, right? Yeah. So if you want to live in Boulder County, many people can only afford attached. Your payment is remarkably more expensive this year than it was a year ago. And so now we're seeing that, right? And we're really seeing the difference here in all these different markets. Look at this, 12% in Boulder, 11. And a lot of this too, and a lot of this too is <laughs> kind of backlogged from yeah. during the pandemic, right? When we were looking at the attached or excuse sure. me, the detached slide, we saw the prices starting to jump a lot earlier in late 2020 into 21 and then all through 2022. Yep. But in the attached market is a much more steady increase because well, it was really lagged. Like 2020, you saw almost no appreciation yeah. in the attached. People and then same with 21, it. people were just, mm -hmm. you know, because of COVID and what we weren't sure of. And then 2022, we saw it pop off. Right. And now it's popping off again. Now we definitely yeah. had a dip towards right. that January, you know, December holiday season. But we're, look at the upward trajectory of that slope. I'm going to keep seeing this, this to, going up. Yeah, yeah. You're definitely going to see this kind of catch up to where the attached market was because that spread got pretty wide there mm -hmm. and it shouldn't necessarily have been that wide, but people changed their behavior and here they are happy to change their behavior right back to what they were doing pre-pandemic because... Can you, know, you, do you want to buy an $800,000 house that needs $250,000 <laughs> of upgrades or do you want to buy a $700,000 condo that's move-in ready and is immaculate? I mean, that's an easy decision for a lot of borrowers out there and a lot of buyers. I mean, I wouldn't move my family into there because they drive me crazy, but you could move into that. Yeah, don't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> yet, 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 yeah, just in case uh -huh. Candace sees this yet. All right, let's keep going here. Either way, so there's a couple <laughs> of big things here with the sales, right? Year-to-date sales are down about 15, 16%. I think we saw 19% if we look at it by a sold data for combined. Here we are, detach is down quite a bit more, right? Detach is actually really in line with what Denver Metro is feeling, 24% drop in detach sales. The big difference in Boulder County mm -hmm. is look at the difference between this and the attached market. See those red lines? That's this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you believe that May outperformed last May? I would have never guessed that going into it, but We've been seeing this really steadily increasing over the course of this year, where attached products have, doing, have done so well, people want yeah. them again, and they're only down 9% year-to-date in sales. I mean, that's incredible. Compared to 23, 24% for our detached. Yeah. So we're looking at almost a 15% or 15 point change between attached and detached and where the units are selling. So it's for some two real reasons, right? We're yeah. only talking because of cost of money and because the pandemic is over. Yes. Exactly. And That's so it. it just shows how outside factors play in. Now let's dive over to, these are our two favorite slides. First, we have our detached. 
And as we look across that left-hand side, we can see that we're really close as a whole county. We're at 99.9% .9 of sold to list price. That doesn't take into account previous listing or uh, previous listing price adjustments. It's what the list price is today for what it sells. And this is where we're seeing it. The houses that are, you know, we're seeing things come in right at 100% almost across the board. And that's what's really surprising to both of us is that we're not seeing as much of a difference in the lower and upper end. Houses that are priced right are going for their asking Sorry. price. We're not hearing too often of offers under under asking. So that's a tool that you can share with your clients. Hey, just because it's listed for 500 doesn't mean you can't offer 485. You know what's amazing to me? Two to two and a half million, or two, I mean, two and a half to three million went for 102% less sell price. So the best, really nice homes up there are having bidding wars when we have 10 months of inventory. Mm -hmm. right it just goes to show you that people are not willing to sacrifice on quality or location and so if you have those and you're taking listings with those awesome you know what you've got price it okay but if you're in a position where like it was built in the 90s and it just happens to be huge and in a good spot you're gonna have to work for that sale and yeah we're really seeing it in the market and what does that mean when you're working with your clients out there those are your opportunities right yeah, if they, you have extra, up into if a they have house, extra capital awesome. to improve it those are the places where they can make some real gains um, and that's just kind of how it plays out is it, it's tough, but you know, if you can afford that higher payment, you have some extra capital, you can get a house that's so undervalued, right? You know, you can get such a bargain on some houses that are just not right location or maybe not, you know, updated, strange architecture, whatever, right? You know, closed floor plans. Yeah. You know, we see a lot of that right now. Honestly, I think the best open. thing lenders and buyers agents could do right now is go out to their client base. If they have people that kind of, hit the pause button a while ago, and they're in that position to go buy a, a higher end home or move into luxury and have the ability to upgrade things, there's just so much opportunity in that market, right? If I had the money to rehab a 7 million, or like a 7,000 square foot house right now, you could probably really, really do well with it. But we're going into a very a different market than we are. But it takes a lot of capital, right? Yeah. I mean, and if you were gonna live in it and remodel it at two or three million and you could sell it for five in a couple of years, it, I think those opportunities are gonna be there. Yeah, and yeah, that's where we're seeing those people who have extra capital have those conversations <clears throat> of maybe lower down payment, keep your capital, and then you can improve right. the home and have those resources available to start improving it day one versus having to do it as you live in it over time. And yeah. it's just I think a lot, the market's lot gonna harder. be very different two to three years. So that yeah. being said, there's opportunity right now. And now, of course, we jump back over to attached we're seeing very similar um, up to that six hundred thousand dollar mark. A little bit of a lull in that six to a million, six hundred thousand to a million. Not by much, so it's very marginal in there. So I wouldn't really put too much weight on it. But we're seeing things come in right close to asking. Once again, if there's a property sitting for three four weeks, recommend to your clients and even to the agents you work with. Here's a great little value add. Hey, write an offer under asking. They're sitting on the market. If it doesn't sell that first weekend come in under asking and if they say no that's okay there's no harm or foul in writing an offer because i'm sure the sellers out there depending on what their needs are rather than them mm -hmm. keep having to do the price cuts and then you say yeah before they even this do the price cut yeah, just send it in right see what happens and just throw those contracts out there it's not you're not being rooted that's why it's an asking price it's not a given price <laughs> I, okay so the last <laughs> thing i want to add to this before we before we move on and we're done with our videos the detached one was down about five to six percent on average right per price point in attached we're only down like two percent mm -hmm. so that being said it just goes to show you how much those two markets have shifted differently over the last couple of years because we just didn't see the peak like we saw last year in attached Right, we peak at 106% instead of 109%, and now we see just more aggressive attached markets. Yeah. So I think it's really important to delineate between the two. And if you guys need any help with the submarket stuff or any more information, reach out to Tucker and I. You know, we're always here as a resource for you for everything that has to do with the market. Yeah. All righty, man. Thank you so much. We're both land titles, so we appreciate working with you, and see you soon. Bye, everybody. Have a good one.